Are we live? I think we are live. I think we are live. Welcome to this morning's Maranatha House Church. Live from our house, or a house, to wherever you happen to be. It's raining its socks off out there. God bless you. It's a special day. How do I turn this around? Is there anyone out there? I'm talking to people on the computer. Nine o'clock. We're going to tell them in five minutes. I don't want to be on the phone.
Good morning, everybody. Can you say good morning, everybody? This is our uh, introduction music. Intro music. Good morning everybody, I hope you're doing well, it is 9 o'clock, just slightly different today, so bear with us. Place. You can see we've got different people here. Say so good morning, Isaac and Rhoda. Whoops, trying, trying to miss small people. Good morning to Nick. Hello. Good morning to JB. Hello, everybody. And look, the sun is out. It is out for a moment or two. Might put the lights on, it's weird, but that's what I'm going to do. Okay. Trusting others will join us. We'll just wait for a second. <laughs> We're up to 100,000 subscribers now. Three wise something. Maybe it's three, I wouldn't say three <laughs> wise men. <laughs> they great big film. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's all a bit different, <laughs> isn't it? Is that on the pew? This is excitement, as far as we're concerned. This is, one of this is, this is how it rates. There we go. Oh, and well, this is one more rendition of the little tune. Good morning, Angela. Yeah, yeah. Okay, we'll try and keep an eye on the time here. Nice one. Oh, did we forget to bring, got to bring that kit? Say again? Or do you want, a, do you want my phone and do a stopwatch or something like that? No, it's fine. I'll do it. Right. Fine. I think she'll be here when she's ready. Good okay, morning, Mum. Well we done, Mum. You'll want to see everybody sat on the sofa here. Look. Good morning, Mary. How are you? Others in this room, probably hundreds. Okay, I think we're there. So it is Maranatha House Church from a different house, various houses. You know, it doesn't make any difference where you meet as long as you meet. Um, and you can eat meat as well. So <laughs> uh, today's title is Can you read that, Heather? You can and must trust Jesus Christ. You can and must trust Jesus Christ. Can you press the button? 
And we go through our little screen here. And what do we have? We have the Sunday, the 7th of April. Oh. Who do we have there? Who is that? That is a hairstyle I'm envious of. Bonnie Tyler. Bonnie Tyler. There you go. Just show it to the congregation. <laughs> Good morning, so they Matt. Can see. That is how hair used to be back Good in morning, the Good um, morning, other person who I don't quite recognise. Why have we got Bonnie Tyler joining us today? She was lost in France. <clears throat> nope. I don't know. Because of a weak Monday. Right. Good morning, Rowena. The, the total eclipse. And it's Christmas. Total eclipse of the heart. Um, so on the 8th of yeah. April, there's an eclipse. There is so like Bonnie Tyler rang up and she said, this, this. I, I can't do a girl's husky voice, but she said there's a total eclipse of the sun over America. America, um, on the 8th, and I wrote a song called Total Eclipse of the Heart, and it seems okay, appropriate totally that I joined you at Maranatha House Church. So I said, you're welcome, Bonnie. Thank you. Um, and I love your song, especially <laughs> Lost in France. It's my favourite. There we go. So it is Sunday the 7th of... April. It is. So is it tomorrow, the eclipse? Yeah. So it's not... Is it actually tomorrow? I think so, yeah. So tomorrow is the end of the world. And I didn't know. <laughs> and I thought it was a week Monday. Just goes to show... There you go. It is actually tomorrow. The total. It's not eclipse. a week Monday. No, I knew that. So it is actually tomorrow. I knew it was well, like I'm not making a prediction, but if it is the end of the world tomorrow, I told you. There you go. <laughs> don't call. Don't call me a date setter, but just in case, I just want to be the one that said it's actually exactly that moment when it crisscrosses as it does and uh, um, marks out that little hamlet with one house called Rapture. Would you believe it? Um, but let's say 12 o'clock. I don't know what the timing is on things. I'm just chilled. But if it's the end of the world tomorrow, I told you. Okay, so we've got here, we'll tie a little prayer. Okay. We're going to pray. Let's okay, pray. here we go. Lord God, we do thank you for one another. Thank you for our vast congregation today, which is there's some visible people here and some invisible people, semi-visible people online and those who might watch later on. We pray that you be with each and every one of us. Help us in every area of our lives where we need help. And Lord, you know every area of our lives where we need help. We pray that you be with the youngest person that we know, new little babies born into this world, and the oldest person that we know. We pray that you be with each and every one of us. Be with our enemies. Be with those who don't like us, don't love us, don't um, think much of us. Um, we pray that you be with them, that you'd speak to them. We pray that you would unite um, more of the world uh, than we could possibly imagine and that you would do that and continue to do that in the way that you've always done it through faith in you that our relationship with you would get sorted out and then quite easily our relationships with one another would get sorted out mm -hmm. we thank you lord that nothing is too hard for you and that you can fix this world um, and this world needs fixing unfortunately we're aware that an awful lot of this world uh, blasphemes your name, doesn't love you, thinks only of itself, um, or what it can gain, or what it can have. But we just want to turn our way, eyes away from the temporary things to the permanent things and to you. And we thank you that you're the Prince of Peace, you're the, the Lord of Lords, the King of Kings. And we pray that you bless us today. Yeah. Be with us, we pray. Lord, are we... Think of lots of different things that are going on. We pray for peace in the Middle East. We understand that it's not going to happen. It's not going to be cured by man. We thank you that peace can come in the Middle East and in my life only through the Lord Jesus Christ and bowing the knee to the maker of all things. And we just pray that for Benjamin Netanyahu, the leaders of Hamas, for Joseph Biden, Kamala Harris, and all of the other leaders around the world, our leaders in the UK, all the other leaders, we'd humble ourselves, we'd stop being prideful, and we'd bow the knee and we'd say, Jesus Christ is Lord, because unless we do that, we're in big trouble, and we'll continue to be in big trouble. And actually, it'll end with Armageddon. And Lord, talking to a friend the other day, and he said, isn't it true that God comes again, that Jesus comes again and stops us from killing ourselves? I said, that's exactly the way that it is. We see that we're the problem, and we're sorry about that. And Lord, we just confess our sins and we pray that you'd forgive us for our sins. And we join together in saying, 
the Lord's Prayer. We say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I'm going to say good morning, Lily. And I think good morning, Fran. Well, good morning, whoever you are, wherever you are. I forgot Ian Wooten's birthday yesterday. Happy birthday, Ian. I know you watch this every now and again. So, God bless you yesterday. Probably 23, I would imagine, by now. Plus, maybe a little bit. And if I've ever forgot a birthday, happy birthday to you as well. What day are we on? No one knows, except this machine over here. 1,476 days we've been doing this. Does it look like it? I think we have to say you've aged a bit. <laughs> I've aged a lot. I was looking at a picture of myself from uh, four years ago, because it's four years, like, right about now we've been doing this, and I've aged at least 1,476 days. <laughs> um, it feels like that. It feels like that. Um, that's 211 weeks. What have we got in the background there? Well, we've got our memory verse, really, for the year. A mm. verse for the year. What does it say, Heather? A verse for the year. That isn't it? The blue it's one. The, on, the uh, black one. The black one, yeah. If the sun shall set you free. Sorry, if, yeah, if the sun sets you free, you are truly free. Did you go I to got, school? I got his glasses. Yeah, um, yeah. His glasses. Yeah. Good morning, so Derek and about? Sheila. If, if the sun sets you free, who's the sun? The Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord Jesus Christ. If he sets you free, how does he set you free? You have to put your faith in him. You have to put your the faith in him. forgiveness of sin. You do. You trust in him to forgive you for your sin. That almost rhymes. Make him Lord of your life. Yeah, yeah. You bow the knee to him. I was talking to someone the other day. He said, I'm never going to bow the knee. Well, yeah. Oof. People say that stuff. It's, I mean, there's pe- people you don't bow the knee to, aren't there? But yeah. I wouldn't. Pol Pot, don't do that. But he's dead. Oh, dear. You know, you don't bow the knee... You just don't bow the knee. You bow the knee to God, the Creator. Um, but one day every knee shall bow. Everyone. And one, one just bow the knee will say, you know, the most hardened atheist, the, the most wicked of men or, or women, always pick on men, um, let's equalise it there today. <laughs> today is a day of equalisation. Um, whoever you are, whether you're just a general good person or the most wicked person on the planet, if you don't trust in Christ, a day will come when you will bow the knee. You'll get on your knees. It won't be just one knee taking the knee and going, yeah, okay. It will be falling down your face and you will say some words. You'll say, Jesus Christ is Lord. You'll say, okay, this is the truth. Let that truth in the here and now set you free because yeah. it does transform everything. Um, or else. I remember saying that or else to someone when I was a kid. Or else. They said, or else what? I went, I don't know. Um, <laughs> And he said, I'll get my dad, and he's a policeman. I thought, oh, no. And I remember running down the hill. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there we go. I think it's time for some songs. Okay. Now, let, do, let me hold this. Okay. Is that the way we're going to do this? Yeah. So we can see. Okay. Look, there uh, she is. All right, so you've got a book. You've got a book. That's good. Dad hasn't got a book. I don't need a book. Um, I have a book. Let's start with, oh, I haven't written the numbers down. Just, all all yeah. hail the Lamb. Music. Can't remember what the number is. Don't worry about that, we'll find it. We'll just sing along as we can do it. Or hail the lamb. Let me know when you got it. Uh-oh. <coughs> yes. Um, number twelve. Number twelve. Right. So you've got to sing very loud at home wherever you are. Sounds like at home. Everyone just says amazing. Good morning um, and congratulations. There is a says. theme today. 
There Points is a thing. Points to anyone who spots the thing. Oh, you might know the thing. Who <laughs> spots the thing. Just think Let's about the thing. see if you can spot the, the thing. thing. There's a common thread throughout the songs. Well, this okay. is different, this. Okay, Gatling. let's do Behold the Lamb. Who the theme. bears our <laughs> sins away. <laughs> Okay. It's not quite working this morning. Sorry, go, for the next one. go for the next one. Go for the next one. I don't quite know where we're at. Yep. Yeah. Go for the next one. Let's do one more verse. Yep. Which verse should we do now? Um, number three. Number three. Okay. Good choice. My favourite number. say this is much better than usual. It's like I wish I could actually play. No, Heather, I actually wish. I'm not into Let's this. Let's do 1019. I'm not into this confession business. <laughs> just. It just, it's so annoying though, isn't it? You know, it's like life. You practice it, you play it, and then you get to perform it, and you bomb. You bomb. I'm human. That's what we're about. We're about confession here. Let's do this. Now, what I'd really like is because when we sing this one, normally we can't do a round because we, we can't do a round, but we could now. You're my strength. I might even know the words for this song. Oh, 
there you go. Oh, Say hello, yeah. smiling again. <laughs> there you go. I needed to hear you. I could quite hear Yeah. It. Any more further confessions you've got? No, that's it. <laughs> no, you confessed enough. Let's finish with thank you for the cross, Lord. Which is number... I don't know. One thousand and something. Thousand and something. That's a good number. It's a solid number. Guys, do you remember this one? Mm, no. Good this morning. Round of applause for Heather, <laughs> Mummy, Granny, RB on the organ. <laughs> oh. There you go, nothing wrong with an organ. <laughs> like the organ, but nothing wrong with Okay, right, okay, so what have we got this morning? What have we got? Let's have a look on the screen here. We press the button, and it says, it says, uh, well, the picture of the day is the eclipse, which is a okay, week Monday, we which is actually tomorrow. Yeah. Zoom in. I'm not up to speed at all with things. I'm sure it's a week away, but it is tomorrow. Um, and it's really interesting. There are lots of things which I'm sure are signs. My little thought concerning all of these things is that when we get to meet God, when we get to heaven, we none of us will go, it was all too cryptic, God. I couldn't understand. The, the truth that you wanted us to all know was hidden away. It was all there for everyone to, to see all along. So I suspect, in fact, I'm convinced that tomorrow's eclipse, uh, combined with other eclipses and all of the other things that go on in this world, whether they be earthquakes, that earthquake that took place, 4.8 on the Richter scale, um, which interrupted many things in New Jersey. A really rare earthquake happened in New Jersey just on the 5th, a couple of days ago, when the United Nations were debating Gaza, a earthquake went off it, um, and the epicentre was in a place called Lebanon. Now, Lebanon really don't like Israel one little bit. And the epicentre just happened to be called Lebanon, New Jersey. You couldn't write it. And I'm sure we're going to heaven and say, yeah, that was yeah, another little warning sign. Just a little bit of shaking. It was shaking the curtain. If you remember, a few things fell off the mantelpiece. You remember that um, United Nations meeting that was going on and you were just interrupted so slightly. I just shook the table around a little bit uh, before the big one, before the big things come along. God knocks on the door gently for years and years and years and years and years. Sometimes taps a little bit more, um, but eventually the door is open. Um, so be ready for the door being open. So that's all I have to say. So uh, what's going to happen tomorrow? No idea at all. But if it is the end of the world, I told you. <laughs> okay, what have we got? We've got a psalm. Heather, what oh, psalm is I it? I reckon 
I'm going for 84 today. Let's see if you're right. You're right. Okay. Wrong. There you go. Let's read a... Why don't you get somebody else to read? Or other well, people to read? Well, we could do that. We could do it. Psalm 84. Um, it's on the screen here. Uh, let's go... Yeah. Do yeah. you want to read a bit of it? We do a, we do a, a bit each. Um, so you can read. You went to school and everything. I went to school, so, yeah. yeah. So would you like to read this side on the left? Okay. All right, Psalm 84, verse 1. How lovely is your tabernacle, O Lord of hosts. My soul longs, yes, even faints, for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. Even a sparrow has found a home. And the swallow, a nest for herself, where she may lay her young, even your altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God. Blessed are those who dwell in your house. They will be praising, they will still be praising you. Blessed is the man whose strength is in you, whose heart is set on pilgrimage. As they pass through the valley of Baca, they make it a spring. The rain also covers it with pools. Awesome. Nice. Um, how do you want to do that? Yeah, they go from strength to strength. Each one appears before God in Zion. O Lord God of hosts, hear my prayer. Give ear, O God of Jacob, Selah. O, behold, o God, behold our shield and look upon the face of your anointed. For a day in your courts is better than a thousand. I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of wickedness. For the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold from those who walk uprightly. O Lord of hosts, blessed is the man who trusts in you. Good stuff. Well read, particularly read by well, Nick. The valley um, of Baca is the valley of what is the brain? Well, weeping. 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 There you go. There you go. Turns weeping okay. to laughter and joy. I was just looking at that as well. Yeah. There you tent, go. Tent. Mm. There's a reason they're not to go camping. Don't. Tents of wickedness. Tent, you don't want, Well, c camping is not always a bad thing. Um, so you're drawing too much out of that scripture. Thank you. What have we got here? We want to recommend and approve of. We approve of this. Oh, this guy. Yeah, we do. Eric Stackelbeck, the watchman. He's a really good guy. If you want to understand a little bit more about what's going on in the world around us, uh, particularly in the Middle East, in Israel, Gaza, Lebanon, Syria, Iran, Turkey, Russia, uh, Sudan, Libya. If you He's want to understand YouTube. these things a little bit more, check out Eric Steckelbeck's <coughs> YouTube channel, The Watchman. Really good. And we're now going to have some communion, some breaking okay. of bread. So, shall I uh, put this down and face us? Yeah, you do face us. That'd be cool. And then we can just pass it around. So then it's. Don't worry, it's just facing us kids. There we go. Okay. Gonna pull your chair across. Yeah. Hey guys, do you want to read that bit out from Luke? <laughs> um, mm -hmm. oh. uh, what are we, Luke? Twenty-two, verse fourteen. Down, please. Uh, just to yeah, fourteen to twenty-three would be great. When the hour came, Jesus and his apostles reclined at the table, and he said to them, "I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer." For I tell you, I will not eat again until it finds fulfillment in the kingdom of God. After taking the cup, he gave thanks and said, Take this and divide it among you. For I tell you, I will not drink again from the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And he took bread, gave thanks and broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, for you do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after the supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. For the, hand, for the hand of him who is going to betray me is... Sorry, am I reading too far? No, it's, no, it's fine. <coughs> to, the, to 23. Oh, uh, but the hand of him who is going to betray me is with mine on the table. The Son of Man will go as it has been decreed, but woe to that man who betrays him. Hmm. Yeah, that's fine. Thanks, guys. 
Yeah, on, on the night we're thinking of, what we call the Last Supper, the Lord Jesus, he took some bread and um, this was a picture of the Passover. And when the last um, play came upon Egypt so that Israel could be set free, it was the death of the firstborn. And I don't know what you make of all that. It says it in the Bible and I believe it. And there's tremendous pictures there. And um, it speaks not only of the stubbornness and the foolishness of Pharaoh. And there's a little bit just before that where the officials and servants of Pharaoh say, just let him go. Don't you know that Israel, that uh, Egypt is completely destroyed? Egypt was completely destroyed. They'd lost everything. And uh, they never really recovered from that. And uh, the stubbornness of Pharaoh was none. And he had to lose that which he treasured most. His, his firstborn son died. Firstborn child died. Um, and it's a, it's a picture ultimately of Jesus Christ dying for us. He died in our place. Otherwise everyone would end, end up dying because all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And we need a saviour, and we have a saviour, and that's what this bread and this wine are about. And on the night when the Lord Jesus was betrayed, he took some bread, and he broke it, and he said, take, eat this, is, is like my body, which is given for you. And uh, when they came out of um, Egypt, they, and, the, and the, the, the angel of death came and uh, took the firstborn sons of, or children of anyone who didn't have blood over their door they, they weren't prepared for that moment you and I can be prepared for meeting God if you meet God and you're not right with God you're not going to survive meeting God you'll fall down you'll say Jesus Christ is Lord and you'll be sent off to hell um, and then hell itself is thrown into the lake of fire you want to avoid that you know, you've been warned, we've been warned throughout our lives about this. It's, it's just plain and obvious fact and truth. But Jesus wants to save us, so he knocks on the door, like with all these signs that are going on in the world. For years and years and years, throughout our lives, throughout history, all the different things that have happened. The First World War, Second World War, the Boer War, you know, the Crusades, all of these different things. All of history, the plague, the Great Fire of London... The formation of America, everything, everything is a sign in one way or another of history being rolled up, being fulfilled, and of the, uh, the, the, the end of all these things, the culmination of the ages, the consummation of everything, Jesus Christ coming back. And Enoch, the seventh from Adam, prophesied about Jesus Christ coming with his saints to judge the world for all of their unrighteous deeds. And he will come again. Jesus Christ will come. God will come again. You need to be ready for the day. So on the night the Lord Jesus was betrayed, he took the bread and he broke it. And he said, um, and if you've got a bit of bread at home, just take a little piece now and say thank you to the Lord. We're very, very grateful. Lord, I thank you for this bread. Just a picture of your body given for us. And we're very, very grateful for your all of the significance of this. I don't understand it all. But I, I, I love it all. I, I want to appreciate it all. And just thinking right now that by your stripes, by your suffering, we are healed. By what you went through, we're healed. And we say thank you. We say thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you that what you did is more than enough. Mm. It's enough. It's everything that needs to be done is done. And we're, we're very grateful. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Just while the bread's going around, I'm going to say thanks for the cup. In fact, someone else is going to say thanks for the cup. So when I, when I say for the cup, you know, I remember being you know, brought up in kind of traditional sort of church and someone says, someone's going to say thanks for the cup. And it always struck me as a funny sort of thing because it's, it's not, you know, what are we, it's not for the cup, it's what's in the cup. 
and the significance of it. And I guess I'm sure that's what was meant. Um, this wine is uh, just a picture. All these things are a picture. They're a sign, a really clear sign for every generation, every person to realize. So would someone like to say thank you for the significance of this wine? Dear Lord God, Lord, we thank you for uh, the communion table. Lord, we thank you that we can come here, we can come anywhere, and we can remember the Lord Jesus Christ giving up his life for us. Lord, we thank you for that um, memory of the Passover in which the blood of the Lamb had to be applied. It had to be applied for the angel of death to pass over. And Lord, we apply the blood of Jesus Christ to our life thousands of years later. Without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. So, Lord, we, we pray this morning that we would reapply the blood of Jesus over our life. That, Lord, this is just wine, it's just grape juice, it's just squash. There's nothing magical or mystical about this. But, Lord, we remember the same colour as the Lamb's blood being applied above the doorpost. So, Lord, we thank you for that this morning. We bless your holy name for the sacrifice of Christ in our life. Amen. 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 <coughs> Okay, right, we're going to pray, and then I'm going to press a button, and we're going to see what happens next. There are lots of different things that could happen this morning, and uh, we're going to finish, hopefully, in just a relatively short time today. Lord, we do just pray for your blessing on us as we just look into your word, and just a little bit of the story of what went on after the resurrection, and help me, help us to have a holy, good time thinking about you and uh, more than about us in jesus name amen. amen okay so yesterday um yesterday we i won't give all the details away because they may be watching today um but yesterday we went somewhere and uh we went into a cafe somewhere and we went for a coffee and we met some people there and we had a really interesting conversation, a good listen and and it was just a, a great special time talking to some folk who in different ways, the bit I just want to draw attention to, uh, have been through times of suffering, have uh, been through some really hard times and I said underneath my jumper, because it was a bit cold, I had this t-shirt on. And I listened to all the things that were said, and uh, um, uh, someone had lost a, um, a child, someone had lost a, a wife, um, and uh, through the, the things of life, um, and uh, I said, actually, underneath my jumper, I've got this t-shirt, God is good. And I said, I really believe that, God is good. Um, and one of the folks may mention of the different reactions that we can have and you know real anger yeah i, I completely get that um uh, you know emotional breakdown lots of different ways we can react to things um god has got a plan and i trust in his plan i, I don't know all the details of the plan I scratch my head about lots of different things, but amazingly have continued to trust in God's plan. I looked and thought about lots of different alternatives, lots of different kind of ways out of having to deal with stuff, but I settled upon and continue to settle upon trusting that God's plan is, is the right plan, and that's the plan that I want to rely upon as Heather zooms in on my unshaven face. Thank you, darling. Um, it's the trouble with these modern cameras, they pick up every detail. Now, we're not going to look at every bit, though. I'm going to actually turn this around and face it myself um, so that I can see what I'm doing. Um, so you can just see the back of the screen just for a second. I just want to share 
couple of little things. Um, I've got my other glasses on there. From Matthew's Gospel, the little bit that you've got at the end of Matthew's Gospel in chapter 28, I want to make mo- one mention of what the gods said. The gods who looked after the tomb and their responsibility was to make sure no one went into the tomb, no one did anything to the tomb, that uh, Jesus wasn't stolen away by night or anything like this. This was all set up by the governing bodies, uh, but instigated really by the religious leaders. Am I religious? What what do you mean by that? What do you mean by that? Am I religious? Um, I trust in Jesus Christ. That's that's who I am. I'm a Christian. Um, And it says here, while the women were on their way, so the women who had been at the tomb were on their way, or were on the way to the tomb, some of the guards uh, went into the city and reported to the chief priests everything that happened. They'd seen, they'd been witness to the things that had happened. They were still around and they'd seen and they um, understood, they, they knew about the angels, they knew that Jesus had gone, they'd been in there, they had a look around, they thought, oh no, and they went to the chief priests. They were perplexed by what they saw. No amount of evidence will convince anyone. No amount of evidence will convince me. I'm having some lovely debates with some friends at the moment. Give me some proof. You keep on skirting around the issue. Give me some solid evidence. And then what? Then you'll believe? No, you won't. Evidence doesn't change diddly squat. It says here, they reported to the chief priests, the very religious ones, everything that happened. When the chief priests had met with the elders, the elders are meant to have known and devised a plan. Anyone who devises anything (laughs) is heading in the wrong direction. Don't devise a plan. And this plan they were devising was to do a cover-up. You remember Richard Nixon? Do you know what? I think what he actually did was just do a little bit of covering up of something or other. No one's even quite sure what he covered up. He wasn't a completely bad guy. You know, we look at him and think, oh, he's wicked. He's no more wicked than anyone else. And he needs saving and you need saving and everyone needs saving. But a plan was devised. And these elders and these chief priests, along with the guards, devised a plan. And they gave the soldiers a large sum of money. Hey, follow the money. Um, Telling them, uh, you are to say, his disciples came during the night and stole him away while we were asleep. They weren't meant to be asleep. They would have lost their lives if their, their news had got back to Pilate and to Herod that they'd gone to sleep. Soldiers are not meant to be asleep. And Christians aren't meant to be asleep. Maybe be wide awake. Be wide awake to the, the evil, divisive and devised plans of the world and of the evil one. Um, if this report says these religious people get to the governor, we will satisfy him. How are they going to do that? Money. We will satisfy his, by him and keep you out of trouble. So the soldiers said, yeah, okay. Um, but probably in Latin. <laughs> in what Can't do Latin. Um, so the soldiers took the money and did as they were instructed. And this story has been widely circulated among the Jews to this very day. The truth comes out. I said to someone the other day, um, be sure your sins will find you out. They said, where does he say that? Where does he say that? Well, I said, it's written on your heart. You know you get caught out. Everyone gets caught out. You can't hide anything. It all comes out in the end. It just comes out. It's just the way it is. So when we got down here the other day, I jumped on my motorbike, went blasting across the field. Um, and, well, I didn't go blasting across the field because I sank in the mud straight away. And I had all my good clothes on. And I actually woke up the next day and I had a big chunk of mud in the back of my head. I thought, wow, what's happened to the back of my head? I've got some horrendous wart or something like this. And it doesn't hurt. What is it? I said, oh, man, what is it? And I grabbed it. I thought, man, what is that? And I pulled it. And, of course, some hair came away with it. And it was a it was a significant chunk of mud that was on the head. The evidence, I mean, it's not surprising. The evidence was, it was everywhere. How did I miss that? How did you miss that? Yeah, exactly. Okay. So Mark's gospel says regarding you can and must trust Jesus Christ. But he, this is an angel that met the women, said, do not be alarmed. Because whenever you see an angel, you're scared witless. You see Jesus of Nazareth. Yep. Who was crucified. He is risen. He is not here. See the place where you laid him, where they laid him. This is where he was. He's not here. But go tell his disciples and Peter. I like that little bit there. Go tell Peter as well. At that point, he's not, the impression is, is that go and tell the disciples and Peter. 
Peter really needs to become a disciple. He's becoming a disciple. He is a disciple, but there's like a little play on words there. Go and tell the disciples, and Peter, and Peter's going, Peter's going, well, I am a disciple. I'm doing my best. Well, you can try your best for as long as you want, and you slip, and you stumble, and you fall. You have to trust in Christ. And Peter, a little bit later on, we're going to read it a few seconds of time, he went from liking God, liking Jesus, to loving him. You've got to love God. Don't like him. Love God. Otherwise, you're just, you're just a fan and not a follower. You like, like, you like Bristol City. With nothing wrong with that. Um, you've got you to love God. God wants your love. He wants your heart. Um, uh, go and tell the disciples and Peter that he is going before you into Galilee. There you will see him as he said to you. He's, he's already told you this. And we're just reminding you of what he's already said. Go and do what he said. You'll meet him there along the way. And sooner or later, you'll also, and me as well, will meet God, will meet the Lord, will meet Jesus. My dad went to glory the other day. And it, it's strange just the way that it is. It's the, you know, but not the way that it is for everyone because he's promised that the last generation who trust in the Lord Jesus Christ will not see death. Every generation before, except for Enoch and Elijah, have seen death. But it's promised that the last generation who trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, maybe tomorrow, remember if it is, I told you, um, won't see death. The, the dead in Christ will be raised first, and we are alive and remain will be caught up, raptured up, to meet the Lord in the air. And thus we'll be with the Lord forever. And you know what? From that place in the air, that is in the heaven, that's with the Lord, from that place in the air, after seven years or thereabouts, we will come back with the Lord and his mighty angels, and the Lord will stop Armageddon, and he will bring about a period of a thousand years where he will reign on earth. Are you ready for the day, or is it just fanciful nonsense, and it means something else? I believe it completely, literally, and it's going to happen. And maybe the beginning of that is going on right now. Um, so they went out quickly and fled from the tomb. Run from the tomb. I love that. Fled from the tomb. They fled from there. You don't need to fear anything. Some of us, me... I'm scared of spiders. Do I need to be scared of spiders? No. I don't need to be scared of spiders. Do I need to be scared of the grave? There's probably not much more scary than the grave. But my dad wasn't scared of the grave. And neither am I. And neither should you be. If you are, it's because you're not yet a Christian. You can become a Christian right now. You can run from the grave, run to the Saviour... Jesus isn't in the grave anymore. He dealt with all that. They fled from the tomb, for they trembled and were amazed, and they said nothing to anyone. They were told to go and tell, and it says here, they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. Don't let fear be your friend. You know, there are better friends than fear. Okay, and then in Luke's Gospel, how are we doing on time? We're okay. Um, I love my favourite story. Second favourite story. Second favourite story, the road to Emmaus. It says here, amongst other things, this is the little bit from that story where you really can trust in Jesus. And you must do that. They were on the way um, to Emmaus, two of the disciples. Cleopas, who's Cleopas? I don't know who he is. Is this another name for Peter? I don't think so. I think there's someone who's mentioned kind of once, and the other disciple. Who's the other disciple? I don't know. I don't know who these two are. Why are their names not written down? I don't know. We could just guess. We go, well, it's definitely this person or that person. I don't know. But Luke and 24, where it says, the disciples' eyes are open, goes like this. They, then they drew near to the village where they were going. That's Emmaus. So they're on the road. And he indicated, this is Jesus, that he would have gone further. Jesus was going somewhere else. Jesus was on his way over there. He wasn't on his way to Emmaus. He was on his way somewhere else. Emmaus had been the place of a really distinct battle and victory 
in the past, it was significant to the Israelites. There have been loads of wars. Israel's been involved with so many wars. Probably you have as well. You say, no, I haven't. What about that one of your neighbour? You go, oh yeah, that's true. Uh, what about, you know, that's the way life is. Um, and Jesus will want to say, shh, shh, stop. That's enough. That's enough. But right here, he was going to go on further. He indicated, no, I'm going on further. Where was he going? I don't know. He was heading towards the Mediterranean, to what we now call Tel Aviv, which is a relatively modern city. He was going that way. Where was he going? I don't know. I don't know. It reminds me of the story when Jesus was walking across the water, and it was like he was going to go further. And they said, no, get in the boat with us. Come in the boat with us. Oh, now we know it's you. And then they were at the other side. He was going to pass them by. What can you make of that? You can make a lot of that and make a lot of that. Think about it today. It's your homework for today, mine today. Where was Jesus going and does it matter? Loads of people say it doesn't matter. Yes, it does. Everything matters. Everything's written down for a reason. Um, but they constrained him. They said, no, 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 please. Whoever you are. They didn't recognize who it was. Constrained him saying, abide with us. A great song, Abide With Us, for it is toward evening, and the day is far spent, and he went in to stay with them. I like that. Mm -hmm. Jesus will listen to you sometimes. Oh, yeah. well, it's interesting, uh, though. I mean, it's because on both of those occasions, with the storm on the boat and this, they, there was, they gained more because they wouldn't let him go. Don't let him go. Mm. Don't let him go. There you go. Now, it came to pass, as he sat at the table with them, they took some bread, blessed it, and broke it, and gave it to them, then their eyes were opened, and they knew him, and then he vanished from their sight. That must have been the most amazing moment ever. Whoa! Okay, I know who it is. Boom! Gone. He's gone. You know, Jesus put on flesh, like I put on a coat. He is God, and he put on our tent, our clothing, for a bit, and then he um, truly declared himself to be who he was by things like this. Vanishing. Suddenly appearing in places. There's something very exciting for you and me and any who trust in the Lord. These things are promised towards us. We'll know as we're known. We'll be changed from what we are into what we shall be. That isn't promised for anyone who doesn't trust in the Lord. You're not promised these wonderful things. You know, you're promised a continuation of existence in judgment. Ah, uh, I choose life. Choose life. There was a t-shirt back in the day, uh, back in the early 80s, which choose life. And it was just a secular one. Um, and I can remember someone wearing it. Choose life. And it meant something else. You know, I choose, you know, live for the day, have a bit of a party now. But that lasts a minute. Temporary bliss. Choose life. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. Um, then it goes on to say, vanish from the sight. And they said to one another, did not our heart, united heart there, it's not heart, did not our heart burn within us while he talked with us on the road, and while he opened the scriptures to us, then they arose up at that very hour and returned to Jerusalem. They got seven miles there, and then they get their running shoes on, and they shoot back, found the eleven. And those with them gathered together, saying, and they said to them, The Lord is risen, and has appeared to Simon. And they told the things that had happened on the road, and how he was known to them in the breaking of bread. If you've never had bread before in that sort of way, um, get somewhere quiet and ask the Lord to reveal himself to you. To train him, ask him, plead with him. Not, hey, you fancy joining with me? Be respectful about it. Um, humble yourself under God's mighty hand. Recognise who he is. And he, he's going to come close. He's going to come close. He's not going to hide. He's going to come close. And then you'll realise he was there all along. And then, um, last little bit here. Oh, I was going to show this bit here. It's so amazing, but I want to show this little bit here. Um, breakfast by the sea. Just very briefly. Uh, this is John 21. Um, amongst other things, Jesus stood on the shore, yet the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. And Jesus said to them, children, have you any food? I love that. Children, 
And have you any food? This is like going back to the very beginning again and underlining what happened when the Lord Jesus called those early disciples and said, follow me, come follow me and I'll make you fishers of men. And you know, sometimes he takes us right back to the beginning again. And here he says, children, have you any food? Are you a child of God or have you grown up? You know, there are way too many people who call themselves Christians that have grown up and they've become adults and they don't need to learn anymore. I don't know whether they were ever children of God. You need to become a child of God and stay as a child of God. Children, have you any food? And they answered and said, no, we got nothing. We've been fishing all night. We got nothing at all. Nothing at all. We're expert fishermen. He knew exactly who they were. They didn't recognize him. He was gradually revealing himself to them. And that's what God does in my life and in our life. He gradually reveals himself. And he, as he does this, he exposes who we really are. That we've got zilch. We've got nothing. No, we haven't got any food. We've got nothing. You got any food? He knows they've got nothing. He, he knows that we're all in a mess. We have no food at all. Um, verse 6 he says, he said to them, cast it out on the right side of the boat. I like that. What? Um, you know, because there is a correct side. There's a correct way to do things. And it's when you hear God tell you to do something, do it. Whether it's the left side or the right side. But here it was onto the right side. And I think it means two things there. One is not on the side you got it on, but on the other side. What difference is that going to make? The net's going to go underneath, go all over the place. What difference does it make? Just do what God says. Don't go, well, I don't understand it. Don't make any sense, God. Just do what he says. Remember, Mary once said that to, to the servants. Whatever he says to you, do it. Whatever he says to you, do it. So, and you will find some. You will find some little children. So they cast, and now they were not able to draw it in because of the multitude of fish. You know what? Just then, John goes, it's the Lord. It's the Lord. Peter, um, you know, just puts on a bit of clothing. I guess he was naked or half naked. And he jumps in the water. He swims to the shore. It wasn't that far out, but far enough out. Because it was quicker to get there in that way. And then John and the rest had the work to do. As Peter is like that. And uh, get to the shore. And there's 153 fish. And you know, for the last three years, I've told you what the 153 fish mean. And I know you know because you lift, listen for three years, but I'll tell you one more time. Why does it say 153 fish? Why is that written down? It's written down for a reason. Not just so you go, oh, it's nice to know, and they were big fish. They were big fish. There was plenty. God can provide for you everything you need in every way, shape, or form. Why is that? Because 153 to those men... And to us, if we do any study at all, means something really important. 153 in uh, the, the numbers which relate to the Hebrew lettering means I am God. Someone counted those fish out. Whether it was there and then and they said, hey, there are 153 fish. That's really significant. That means 153 fish means and I, Elohim, I am God. God gives us signs wonderful signs that are unmistakable and it's up to us whether we believe them or not one of my little debates at the moment is often about the whole of creation is evidence that there is a God the whole of creation that's enough proof proof that's enough proof you don't need any more than that and God has given you more than that he's revealed himself to you and he revealed himself to those disciples and he said I am God and you know what, they brought all that fish to the shore. And then they went, oh, you got a fire there. Oh, there's fish on there already. He didn't need any of that fish. He didn't need that fish. He had some fish. Where did he get those fish from? He's God. I've got no idea. Did he go fishing? Maybe. Did he just go, fish? And there were fish. Fire? And there was fire. I've got no idea. Probably. He just, did he walk all the way to Galilee? Or did he just appear there? I reckon he just appeared there. There he was, all of a sudden, they didn't, he was hidden from them because it says they didn't ask, dare ask, who are you, Lord, knowing it was Jesus. There was something about him, and there's something about him 
that can change your life and it better change your life. He better change your life completely because if he doesn't change your life completely, you're not going to heaven. You don't know him. And he says, I don't know you. Now, there's a young lad called Jerry who's recently become a Christian. Jerry might be watching right now. We'll watch you later on. And he said to me the other day, at the thought of something like the thought of Jesus saying, um, depart from me, I, I never knew you, um, is so awful. And, and I'm worried about it. Words to that effect. If I've misquoted you, Jerry, I'm sorry, but that's the impression that you gave. And I said, don't worry, you're already in the boat. You're on Noah's Ark, as it were. You're, you're saved. You've asked for full salvation, haven't you? And that's what it is. You ask for full salvation, you're saved from your sins, you're going to heaven. But if you haven't asked, for God to make you a Christian and for ask him to do everything that's necessary to make you a Christian, you're not going to heaven. And he says, I don't know you. He, he's, Jesus is still a stranger to you. You don't want that. He doesn't want that. He wants you to come closer to him. So my double dare today is to say, Lord Jesus, please make me a real Christian. Please forgive me. For all of my sins, do everything you need to do to change my mind and my heart and my life so that I really do know who you are. That you're the one who suddenly appeared in Galilee, that suddenly made a fire, that suddenly had fish there, that they were probably the best tasting. I love fish and chips. We had some good fish and chips yesterday. Oh, I only had a bit of Rhoda's fish. And it was I was very restrained and I nearly want another bit. But you know, it was delicious. But the, imagine fish with Jesus on Galilee. Yeah, I'll take that one. That'll be a meal. Uh, yeah, absolutely the best. So there you go. There's more that could be said. But this one here, join us on the 14th of next Sunday. April, next Sunday, 7 30 at our house if you'd like to if you don't want to come don't come but if you'd like to come we'd love to have you there don't be a stranger um come along if you can you'd be super duper welcome let's press the button what we got we got the bit here so uh, oh let's turn around on this uh, may god's blessing surround you each day as you trust him and um, walk in his way may his presence within god and keep you from sin what are you doing i don't brain? know go <laughs> Go in joy, go in peace, go in love. And then our last little bit there. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord lift up his, sorry, may the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Sorry, I'm at a funny angle here. Um, look at my hair. Was it like that the whole time? It was, it was. I didn't okay. say anything. Well, that's very good of you. Okay, Nobody well, God, said anything. no one said anything. No comments on my hair. Uh, God bless you all. Thanks for joining us today. Thanks for the congregation. Round of applause, congregation. Thanks for joining us, David. Can you shout out, kids? Say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well done, guys. Love you all, and we look forward to seeing you all soon. Thanks for your ongoing prayers. And if you were just wondering what the noise was, as Jonathan was, let me just see if I can turn this around. We were playing with these, okay? That's what was going on. There was serious building going going on. All right. There you go. God bless you. Bye. Bye.